Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to get VRMs working with Emergence. In this tutorial I'm going to teach you how to allow users to load their game ready avatars from the Emergence avatar system into your game world. The contents of this tutorial is also available in our documentation. You can find it under Game Engine, Unreal, How To's, Avatar System, How To Get VRMs Working With Emergence. I'm basically just going to be following this tutorial as part of this video. So if you prefer it in a written form or you want to go back and have a look over it, you can find it here. Additionally, an example of this can be found in the Emergent Sample Project. We have a separate video on the Emergent Sample Project, which you'll find in a card now or in the video description. You can find the sample project on our releases section at github.com forward slash crucible networks ltd forward slash emergence sdk unreal go to our releases section and then go to unreal sample project zip and download it as i said everything i explained today is available in the sample project but today i'm going to be walking you through it as a step-by-step -step process explaining how the system works so that you can adapt it to your needs so with that said let's get started so the first thing we need to do is get vrm for you vrm for you is a unreal engine plugin which allows you to load VRMs into Unreal in real time, which is useful if you're trying to use VRMs in your game. You'll need to get the source version of vrm for you which you can find on their GitHub. Specifically, you can find it at github.com forward slash ruyo forward slash Unreal Engine underscore vrm for you plugin. Once you go there, you'll want to go to their tags on the right here. And you'll want to click on the latest one, which will be the one at the top. So for me, it's 20220809. And you'll want to press zip, which will start the download for the zip. If this doesn't work for you, a known good working version is 20220705. You will need to make sure that you do download it from this specific repository, as the releases in the other vrm for u Unreal Engine repository that they have does not contain the source code. Emergence's VRM support plugin requires the source code to work. Now that that's downloaded, we can open it up. And I've also opened up my games main folder, which contains the U project here. First, I'm going to go into this folder, go to the plugins folder, and you'll see VRM for U. In my game folder, I'm going to go into the plugins folder and I'm going to drag vrm for u into the plugins folder and extract it there. So now it should say the name of your game, so for me it's My Emergence Game, Plugins, vrm for u Now I'm going to open up My Emergence Game. Once the editor opens, I'm going to go to Edit, Plugins, and search VRM, and check both of them. When you check Emergence VRM support, it's going to tell you that it's a beta version and say, you sure you want to enable? Just press yes. And you'll also want to check VRM for you and then press restart now. And that should restart the editor for you. When it restarts, it's going to ask you if you want to build the modules and you should press yes. It will now say starting build. Now that it's opened, if you search VRM, they should now both be checked. So now we have VRM for you and the Emergence VRM support plugins enabled. We can now start building out the code to get the player's mesh to change to their persona's avatar when they select their persona. The way that we're going to build this to work is that when the player's persona is either loaded or they select a new persona which has a different avatar, we're going to want to have that persona's avatar loaded from the Emergence Avatar system. This isn't the only way that you have to do this. You can have it so that it only changes whenever the player loads into your multiplayer game world, for example, or only every time a new round in a fighting game is started and, and just ignore changes if it happens during a round. But for, for what we're gonna be building today, it's gonna to be every time that persona changes, we're going to be loading that avatar. So the first thing we need to do is get the player's persona's avatar download URL. So first off, we're going to open up our third person character again. You don't have to put this code in third person character, but because it's to do with the third person character, I think it's probably the most appropriate place for it today. On begin play, 
we're going to bind to the event on cached persona updated. This event is triggered every time the user logs into Emergence once they visit that home screen or every time the persona is updated after that. So for example, if they create a new persona and then activate that persona or then switch back, you're going to be getting this on cached persona updated event. We're going to drag off of that and we're going to do custom event on persona updated. From that, we're going to break this into an emergence persona. And this is all of the personas details. So we have the name, the bio, the settings, uh, and the avatar ID. There's also deprecated avatar. You don't need to worry about that. That's pro that may even be gone by the time you are watching this tutorial. Now we need to get all of the avatars the user owns to compare this avatar ID to. To do this, we're going to drag off of emergence again and get their cached address. So this is their wallet address. We're going to plug this into an avatar by owner and we're going to connect the execute pin like that. So now from this we need to get all of the avatars and we want to find an avatar from string. So we're going to drag off of avatars and do find avatar from string and we're going to drag off of avatar ID and plug the avatar string into there. This will find us the emergence avatar data structure that is related to this avatar ID. So from this we're going to break that into the avatar data and then we're going to get the URI base which is found in avatar. So break that and there's our URI base and this is a URL which is either an IPFS URL or a HTTP URL, but it may contain a special set of characters which we need to replace with the token ID. Because the URI base is for all of the tokens from a specific collection, it will have a substring within the URI which is to be replaced with the token ID. And we need to do that here. So we need to get the token ID by breaking this one. And we need to plug URI base into a replace node. And we need to put into from open curly brace one close curly brace which is the substring we're looking for. And we want to plug in the token ID to two. And that will give us the correct string. So now we can now create a new custom event, which will be our load VRM from URL. And this is going to take a string. We're going to call it URL. After you've done this, make sure to hit compile, otherwise you'll get an error later. And we want to plug this into load VRM from URL. And that needs to go into the output of avatar by owner completed, because we can only execute it once that has returned. So let's just clean this up a little bit. I'm moving this down so it looks nice for you, like that. Whenever we get a new persona, we're going to find the relevant avatar data from avatar by owner by passing in our current wallet address. We're going to find from the array of avatars the one with the matching avatar string. We're going to get that NFT's token ID and we're going to get the URI base from the emergence avatar system. We're going to get a URI string for that specific NFT and then we're going to pass it into a function that we're going to write in a second called load VRM from URL. So load VRM from URL is going to handle the task of loading the VRM itself. However, before we can add the code here, we need to actually have a skeleton that we can work with 
Now, you can, of course, use your own animations, but you probably don't have them right now. You'd probably rather use Unreal Engine's third-person example built-in animations. An easy way that I've found to get this working quickly is to first go to your content folder and search for UE4 Mannequin Skeleton. It will just it will come up if you search just UE4. You'll want to open this up and open the Retarget Manager, which is available in Window Retarget Manager, or it might already be open like it is for me. You'll see it here on the left. Where it says Setup Rig, click on Select Humanoid Rig. When you do this, it will automatically map all of the bones to the humanoid rig. Because it's basically already on the humanoid rig, it's very easy for Unreal to automatically map it. Once you've done this, press save and then close it. Now you've done that, you need to find the animation blueprint. So search anim bp and you'll find it here. Right click on it and go to retarget anim blueprints and press duplicate anim blueprints and retarget. Once you've done that, select Scale Vroid Simple. If you can't see this, you might need to click View Options and then Show Plugin Content. And then in Replace, type Third Person. Exactly like how I have. And then in Width, type VRM. Then press Retarget. And that will retarget that animation blueprint, blend, this blend space, and the animation sequences for the default Vroid skeleton example. So now we have a VRM compatible skeleton, which has the Unreal Engine's default animation blueprint and all of the animations associated with it retargeted to it. Now that you've created that, you'll need to set up your character to receive these animations. So click back on Edit Third Person Character, and we need to add the Emergence VRM Mesh to this. So go to Add Component, search Emergence VRM Mesh, and then click and drag it to attach it to the default mesh. Now, the reason for this is vrm for you needs to have a hidden mesh which actually does all of the animations and then it sort of real-time retargets them to the actual mesh. It's somewhat confusing, but it just works. So now that you've done that, click on the Emergence VRM mesh and click on a skeletal mesh and select SK underscore Vroid symbol. Then click on the Anim class and change it to the one that we just created, which is called VRM Anim BP. Now we have a VRM compatible mesh with an animation class that has animations from our game. You can, of course, retarget your game's animations to this class instead, if you have those already. But right now, I'm assuming you don't have any to retarget, so that's why we're doing it with, with the third-person example character. Now you have the components set up and the URL of the model, all that's left to do is load the model. So what we need to do is we need to actually get the model from the URL. So we've implemented this method called get data from URL, and this returns data as status code and whether it was a, was a success. So if it was a success, we want to branch off of a, if it was a success, and we want this to be on, on get data from URL completed. Once we've retrieved the data, we want to get a reference to the emergence VRM mesh, and we want to activate VRM mesh from data. And once we activate it, we want to plug in this, we want to get this data. So we've got the data and we're sending it to the VRM mesh. This should mean that once we have the URL, we start loading the data and this is asynchronous. So it might take some time, but it will eventually happen. And then once it, once we've got the data, it will activate the VRM mesh and that will replace the visible mesh on the character's mesh. The Emergence VRM mesh is invisible, so you don't need to worry about that. So now once I've logged into Emergence and it loads my personas, I make a new persona. Zaprox. Create persona, are you sure? Yes. And now it's loaded in and it has the default Unreal Engine animations. 
So now when your player selects a persona which has an EAS avatar associated with it, the game will automatically load it. Thanks for checking out this tutorial and Emergence. We're going to be putting out more updates in the future, so maybe hit the subscribe button and you'll be informed for any new videos we make. Thanks for watching.